Look at this. Ball's on the ground. Brown's picked up by the Raiders. Touchdown with Nichols. Little chip shot. <laughs> Mahomes throws, oh. and he's picked off. Run back for a touchdown. Two touchdowns in seven seconds. Now, at this exact moment in time, what you were witnessing was by a mile the worst operating offense that we've ever seen in the Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid Kansas City era. Yeah, uh, it, it wasn't pretty. Now, ever since that point, now guys, I don't like to over-exaggerate here. So when I tell you that this is one of the most obscene regular to postseason turnarounds, whether it be through the film, the numbers, or any other regard that you want to consider, I'm not just going to promise you that this is truly unlike anything this game has ever seen before. But also, there is a very specific reason why nobody can figure out what the hell they are doing. But before we get into that, today's video is brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Now guys, we've got just one week of this football season left, and we've seen a lot, whether it's been excitement, heartbreak, or really anything else. But our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook, you're going to want to see what they got for Super Bowl 58. Because if you're a new customer, just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code DIGEST, and bet $5 on any wager, you'll receive $200 in bonus bet instantly, which you can then use to get in on Super Bowl 58. But if you're already signed up at DraftKings like myself, you can place a bet on Super Bowl 58 and get a bonus bet back being the same amount as your initial wager with max rewards vary. And if sports betting isn't available where you're located, there is always the DraftKings Daily Fantasy app. So once again, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code DIGEST, and bet just $5 on any wager to receive your $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code DIGEST only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Okay, so in terms of the overall production that was seen from this Kansas City Chiefs offense, really throughout the entire course of this 2023 season, some of you will probably look at the overall numbers and think that it's laughable for me to say that this offense was historically bad as we did in the beginning of the video. But I mean, even with being top 10 in the league in this regard, in terms of the retrospect of Kansas City themselves, it's almost hilarious to say out loud. But saying it was historically bad almost doesn't do it justice. Like seriously, no matter what lens you try to look at it from, whether it's say, for example, EPA rate per play, maybe their effective rate through the air attack, or even their overall efficiency in terms of how they were able to utilize the ground game, pretty much everywhere you looked, not only was it the lowest point that we've seen since this guy has taken over, but also it was probably going to take nothing short of a miracle for this team to see another deep playoff put. Oh, this night in the history of Arrowhead State. He's got the first down, and the Chiefs are going to be going to Baltimore. The first team since New England of 2003 and 4 to go back to back. So, uh, about that miracle they needed, I wouldn't go as far to call this that exactly, but I mean, it's pretty damn close. I mean, the air attack has been above and beyond the level of efficiency that it saw through the first 18 weeks of this season. Then, in terms of the run game, I mean, just look at the numbers and you'll realize there hasn't been a team this postseason that's utilized this portion of the field better than Kansas City. And sure, while the numbers can clearly do a great job at amplifying the absurd turnaround that we are seeing on a week-to-week -week basis, but obviously, there's still the question, what the hell did they change. Now, first things first, let's take a look at the air attack, because aside from all of the struggles that were seen in this regard, whether it was one thing or the other, the biggest difference that we saw within this portion of their offense wasn't necessarily this, but it was actually their approach as to how they intended to move the football. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, this season, Mahomes and this offense were seen utilizing a more quote-unquote small ball approach, or more so leaning back on the short game far more than we've ever seen them do so in the past. And you could probably tie the reasoning for this to a number of different factors. One maybe being the implementation of, say, new routes 
out concepts and play schemes with their new offensive coordinator Matt Nagy this season another being again a lack of a deep threat that is at least until the playoffs or even anything else for that matter point is this new approach yeah something needed to change so what does Andy Reid do when his inefficient offense isn't cutting it well apparently you just need to double down on everything that's not working and don't get me wrong, because in terms of Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes' ability in this postseason so far to more consistently extend plays out of the pocket and generate big gains down the field through a number of different concepts, they have absolutely done that. But I mean, at the same time, they've somehow taken that small ball offense we were talking about this season and pretty much did the unthinkable by making it even smaller. I mean, real quickly, just consider the two most targeted wideouts within this offense in both rookie Rasheed Rice and, of course, tight end Travis Kelsey. Because it's one thing when you realize that these two have been targeted at shorter lengths down the field out of any major wideouts that you could think of in these playoffs so far. But it's another when you see how they're pretty much the only consistent weapons at Mahomes' disposal due to this. I mean, straight up, you guys, it is one of the most conservative approaches that you will ever see to a pass game of this caliber and defenses you've seen it they don't know how to stop it but there's also many different factors that go into it one has clearly been the increased use by Matt Nagy and Andy Reid of Travis Kelsey at the traditional tight end position which has led to some of those different route combinations we've talked about thus also confusing opposing defenses there's also within those route combinations where you see Kansas City frequently implement decoys on fly and go routes to extend the field while also finding that middle ground of use between the two concepts and actually capitalizing on that deep ball threat as we've seen defenses sometimes don't take it seriously or even as simple as this sounds Kansas City finally utilizing extended route developments right alongside the insanely underappreciated luxury of Mahomes ability to extend plays out of the pocket and honestly when your insanely conservative offense has two guys generating the most yards after the catch compared to any other team in the entire postseason sometimes you just take what you can get and really, the same can be said for every other aspect of this team. Take their run game for an example, whether it's been their ability to abuse both gap and zone scheme concepts, or even outside toss formations, depending on what they recognize from opposing defenses. Then, of course, there is also this team's defense that I think for the most part you could say has played above and beyond any expectations they had prior to this, or really anything else you want to consider. But that is also where I want to hear what you you guys have to think of this so please let me know in the comments what has surprised you the most out of everything that we've seen from kansas city in these playoffs so far and of course will it be enough for them to win it all give me a prediction and a final score but once again thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you all more than anything and i will see you guys in the next video